Good morning, everyone. We will begin hearing number nine of the 182nd period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, the situation of human rights of returnees to Haiti requested by, by the um, Jesuitic Service for uh, Migrants. We have uh, the representative of the uh, Commissioner for Human Rights of the UN for Haiti. I am joined by Estuardo Rallon and Commissioner uh, Esmeralda Rosemena. I am also joined by the Executive Secretary, Deputy Secretary Pulido and the uh, Rapport Special Rapporteur Soledad Garcia Munoz. Before beginning, I would like to say that we have a digital tool on the platform that will work as a timer. Please, I ask you to look at it so you won't go over your allotted time. We have interpretation into English and uh, French and Creole, and this is being broadcasted on several platforms. Now, with regards to the time, we will begin with the first participation by the civil society for 20 minutes. Then we're going to have the state's uh, participation for 20 minutes. The representative of the High Commissioner will speak for seven minutes, then the Commission will speak for 20 minutes, and uh, then there will be comments. So we will begin, and we'll, I will give the floor for 20 minutes to the civil society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Commission. Thanks, everyone for being here at this uh, 182nd period of sessions um, to defend the status of returnees from the US since September 19, 2021. Madam President, distinguished members of the Com Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, I'm Mr. Michon. Uh, I am the director of the uh, Jesuitic Service for Haiti. Um, our organization is an organization based in Haiti. Our mission is uh, being there and serving and defending the rights of returnees, uh, migrants and refugees, victims of abuse and of physical, sexual, moral, violence and the members of their families who are in a vulnerable situation when they are in the territory of Haiti. And the logic, in that logic, we have requested for this hearing at the Inter-American Commission. And before uh, starting, I would like to introduce the representatives of our service. Uh, they will introduce themselves. Thank you very much, colleagues. Good morning, Madam President, distinguished members and representatives. I am Jean Anthony Basile, the representative of the Jesuit uh, Service for Migrants. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Marie Francoise Bic. I am assisting uh, the, the returnees as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Blas Strong and the, from the Migrant Service. I am very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Our message today seeks to address three particular items. We would like to stress that the state of Haiti, we wanted to uh, help people obtain a passport and other documents. We would also like to address the uh, abuse and the mistreatment of the, to those, of those returnees. We would like to insist on the state's capability to receive those returnees during the different crises that the country has been going through. Finally, we will tell, tell, tell you about the trauma and the sequels suffered by the returnees. On September 19, 
between September 19th and October 14th, 2021, Haiti received by plane a considerable amount of uh, returnees from the Dominican Republic, but I'm not here to talk about the Dominican Republic. We will focus on the uh, returnees from that date, from September 19th. Ever since, we have had 3,000 returnees from countries like the US, Cuba, Bahamas, Mexico, and Turks and Caicos. And they, according to them, they were returned in infrahuman conditions. They didn't have anything to eat or they barely had something to eat. They were handcuffed, traumatized, and they said that uh, they felt lost. Many of them say they lost their passports or they were confiscated or seized by the authorities. They also did not have an opportunity to be uh, to receive a COVID test. So many of these people also claimed they have lost their uh, documents and their travel documents. According to many of them, authorities took their passports as the woman who will talk about her experience in a little while. So considering this situation, our first request to the commission is for the commission to urge the state of Haiti to implement a mechanism for us to facilitate access to their documents a passport in particular for these persons, because many of these persons cannot afford that document. Again, they cannot pay for that. Honorable members of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. This is our first request to the commission. I will now give the floor to Jean-Anthony Basile. As many know, as you know, Madam President and honorable members of the Inter-American Commission, the situation, the political, economical situation in Haiti became out of control in the past years. The country is facing a very complicated security uh, situation. The gangs control the neighborhoods and many people have been kidnapped in the past month. Armed groups rule by terror throughout the land. People live in fear. No one can uh, go travel in the city out of fear. Four million people in Haiti live this insecurity. We also learned of a negative growth of the economy in the past few years. The economy shrunk with a catastrophic balance for 2021-2022. The GDP is very low as well. And this, so the situation is very serious and has been so for the past five years. Political authorities were never these um, useless in being able to solve this. And the political and economical and social crisis turned into a constitutional crisis. And now it's an existential crisis as well. As we could read on newspapers on December 11th, on August 14th, 800,000 people suffered uh, an earthquake in the south of the country. 
which is a region that had been suffering and continues to suffer from the sequels of uh, of a hurricane that had destroyed many, many homes, buildings, and documents a couple of years before. So within this context of crisis, the deportation of Haitians began by the US. We can observe degrading treatment of our citizens And that, of course, took uh, that, of course, affected the world's opinion. But nevertheless, there wasn't a reaction from the state of Haiti. So, our second request is to ask the state to denounce that inhuman treatment, and for it to start uh, helping them to uh, insert them in their communities, to reintegrate them. This would be in accordance to their um, ESC uh, rights um, obligations and the different conventions, international conventions signed by Haiti, because all of these rights should be protected and should be respected because of that. Now I will give the floor to my colleague, Marie Francoise. psychological support uh, during uh, the psychological support sessions, we have heard terrible stories from people who were returned. And we helped those people to um, think or to reflect on the experience they live and how they felt while living it. And we try to propose solutions. We try to give them advice to help them uh, be resilient about uh, their emotional state. These people are having trouble to sleep they're having trouble finding inner peace because they were traumatized by these experiences. That experience is also marked by the abandonment, the humiliation, the frustration, and it generated a lot of sadness, anger, fever, uh, fear, and even suicidal thoughts in these returnees. So it was essential to be there for these people to help them go through that situation. Many a time, they also had to leave a partner who had been injured or who had died. They also suffered thefts. Others had to see their partners being killed in front of them. They saw rapings, but they survived. They even went through a serious physical danger or had to survive kidnappings by armed groups. So they went through a lot of suffering and very difficult ordeals. They describe terrible detention situations. They were arrested and incarcerated for several days without having the possibility to take a shower, brush their teeth, or anything of the sort. Someone told me I was feeling water, I, I, sorry, I filled water bottles and I would hide them so I could shower afterwards or I could wash myself. And I think that because of that hygiene problems, I got a vaginal infection. And throughout that detention, that woman could not change her clothes. She got to Haiti with the same 
clothes she wore for eight days. Someone else claimed they could not get the sonogram they needed. The administration did not take the time to tend to her request. In the end, she finally was able to take a pregnancy test, which was negative. But in Mexico, she had taken several pregnancy tests and they were all positive, which makes us think that this was a premature abortion. Nevertheless, in spite of that situation, that woman wasn't uh, helped at all, did not, just, did not receive any sort of, of assistance. In a general way, detainees were uh, loaded onto a bus and they were only given um, wet towels uh, or tissues and that was it. Most of them claimed that the worst moment in their ordeal was that they were treated as bandits, as criminals. They got to the uh, international airport in Haiti and they felt relief to be in Haiti, but they had not been told where they were going to. That is why we ask the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights to earn of Haiti to do just a bit of follow-up to help these people through these painful moments by providing psychosocial support because all of them who benefit from the Jesuit uh, service tell us that we are the only ones helping them. We also urge the state to provide psychological support for a certain time to help them integrate because the story of their trip was quite an odyssey and left deep scars in them. And when they got to Haiti, in the context we're living through, we're going through right now, it's hell. Hay un problema con la traducción, Presidenta. There's a problem with the interpretation. We are not getting Spanish interpretation. Please hold on for just a second. Vamos a frenar si la there's no interpretation. Please hold on. We are having a problem with the Nuevamente, Vanessa, este, este tiempo no se descuenta, se paraliza ahí el reloj. Eh, está realizando la interpretación y que nos avisen también. We will stop the time, please. Uh, let us know what are their different channels for English, Creole, and English, so we know how to connect. As soon as Vanessa tells us, we will come back. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. I have reset the service. Do you want to try? Ah, Vanessa Inglés, Celeste sí, aquí habla. Perfecto.
Perfecto. Excelente el canal español. Celeste, perfecto. ¿Y el de Criol? Perfecto. Eh, si le parece, entonces, comisionada, podemos retomar. Retomamos y por favor le pido que... Can begin again, please. Uh, take it back to two minutes. Yes, we will uh, reset the interpretation. Même quand les Sambral dit là, 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 pour un pilote, si là, il y a qui était dans la route là, avec là, nous, si bien, un pile, mes amis, pour ça, nous, si bien, parfois, nous, 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 l'autre nation, pour nous, pour nous, même l'État pays, parfois, nous, pour nous, depuis, jour, nous, 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 Sí. Eh, no está funcionando, Vanessa, la interpretación, tampoco los subtítulos. Me da muchísimo pesar. Eh, entonces, mientras se hace esta, este ajuste, eh, vamos a seguir con la participación. On, on va a sí, seguimos con la participación eh, y voy a pedirle... Bench a los representantes de sociedad civil que igual nos lo pueden enviar por escrito porque no está funcionando adecuadamente la interpretación en este momento al español lo estoy verificando, entonces seguimos nomás con la participación porque esta audiencia se está transmitiendo y luego por escrito nos hacen llegar por favor la interpretación, seguimos por favor adelante, gracias Ok, we will go on, there was a problem with the real interpretation but we will receive the we will receive the written documents afterwards Yes, we will send you uh, the documents, of course. You can email it to us afterwards. Um, you won't be able to do it on chat, but please send it to us afterwards. Yes, I will send you that afterwards. Okay, I wouldn't want to deny her possibility to speak at the hearing, regardless of the fact we cannot understand her. Could you please let her know that she can go on because this will be recorded, regardless of the fact that she will send us her participation afterwards, okay? Yes, okay, so she can go on. Yes, she can go on. I am speaking for myself, but this also applies to people, for people, for my partners, because what we suffered was terrible. We don't want anyone else to go through this. But when I got to the airport, I had bad ideas in my head. I had been out of my country for three years. And now, in, I'm in a state where I don't know what to do. I have children, and I only returned with one of them. I have more children at home. Some days I wake up and I don't have anything to give to my children. We are all separated and apart from what's going on in my country, I am afraid of what might occur. I don't know, I understand why we are suffering so much. Some people I know, in order to, uh, when they, they made them come back, they killed themselves. So I asked the commission to urge the state of Haiti to protect these people. So we can survive this tragedy. Thank you very much.
travail essentiel et notre trois demandes. La première consiste à demander à la Commission de de mettre sur pied ou en place des mécanismes pour faciliter aux personnes rapatriées. And we will also like to ask the state of Haiti to uh, act in order to modify the situation of the returnees, granting them passports. And we, uh, we ask for the creation of a commission um, because we wish, we hope the state of Haiti will assist the returnees psycho uh, socially. So we urge the state of Haiti for it to get in touch with the returnees. Finally, Madam Commissioner, thank you for receiving the Jesuit service in Haiti. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, I apologize for the technical issues, but Please be uh, rest, rest assured that we value your participation. I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state for 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And most especially, I would like to greet the members of the uh, Jesuit service for their presentation. I would like to thank them, the government of Haiti understands the um, information that has been presented and it maintains its commitment to the defense of human rights. The government is very happy that this audience is being held. Uh, to meet, uh, to, to discuss the situation of Haitian citizens. The government understands the important uh, the importance of the migration problem. And it has also discussed this issue at the UN. Also, the government of Haiti, through its ambassador in Washington, Denoun has denounced the treatment suffered by migrants. I, I would like to apologize on behalf of the uh, representatives of Haiti because they wished to attend this hearing. They were forced to uh, deal with other issues our country is facing, as you must know. But our ministry wanted to tell the commission that the, uh, what the state of Haiti's response is by presenting it, and, and we will present our written reply as soon as possible. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Ambassador. If the state won't speak anymore. No, that's it for the state. OK. Then we will move on to the representative of the, um, oh, sorry, Ambassador, yes. Yes. Um, uh, 
with regard I, I spoke in French but we're dealing with a difficult situation in the north of the country the government um, declared three days of mourning so as I said the government's priority is that situation the government wished to participate but because of this situation it was unable to but it will send its written response to the commission of course ambassador thank you very much i just wanted to know if you wished to use more of your time okay thank you Mr. Jean-Bernard Henry, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you very much. I would like to greet everyone here, the commissioners. I am here. to sustain what was said by our ambassador and to explain a couple of things about the measures implemented by the government with regards to the situation of migrants. We uh, heard the testimony, it was very touching. And of course the state is not indifferent and is moved by this sorts of situations that are so serious in the region. It's a region we have a very deep uh, link with, and we will do everything in our power to address these situations. I would like to say that the National Office for Migration and the National Association for Migrants is, work, is working to make this a decent return to migrants and the Haitian society. The government also tried to create a task force with the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry for Economy and Finances to assist the migrants. And the most vulnerable populations to allow them to find employment so that they can reclaim their dignity. And in coordination with the US, as it's one of the regions where the migrants were, uh, the government of Haiti through its Washington embassy and its bilateral relations, had a meeting with the Department of Migrants. And back then, the ambassador in Washington repeated the government's will to work with the US to provide a decent treatment to the Haitian immigrants. Most more accurate data were necessary to understand the status in which they were these migrants were detained. The ambassador also requested to um, implement a program of family reunification so that they can uh, uh, meet with their families again once they had returned to the US. The government also requested the um, installment of a moratorium on the uh, expulsions or deportations. And this was um, an, a commitment that the US made. The Haitian consulate in Mexico, a, a, a consulate in Mexico was opened in a different city to receive migrants when the uh, amount of my, Haitian migrants was increasing. Some urgency measures were implemented to account for the situation of the migrants once the crisis had hit. So 
we um, appreciate the presentation of the Jesuit service for migrants. And we want to ensure dignity and but also a reintegration with uh, psychophysical support once they have returned to Haiti. I would like to thank the um, civil society and the members of the commission. Thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Now I will give the floor to Mr. Arno Gustave Rocher, the representative of the um, Human Rights Commissioner for seven minutes. I will speak in French. Representatives of the um, of Haiti, members of the civil society. I am part of this hearing today in the 182nd period of sessions of the commission about the situation of returnees to Haiti as uh, representatives for the uh, human rights commissioner in that country. I would like to present infor an informal report on the situation of human rights of returnees in Haiti. None of these comments should be understood as an express uh, denouncement or uh, um, a pronouncement made by the UN. Madam President, members of the commission, first of all, I wish to thank the Inter-American Commission for its interest and commitment in the issues related to Haitians, migrant Asian, Haitians, and also those who were expelled. As you know, the context of Haiti is tremendously volatile. In the past few months, the president of the Republic was assassinated. There was an earthquake in the south of the country. The security situation worsened and the gang activity grew and the police was unable to prevent that from occurring. Apart from that, the indicator, the socioeconomic indicators are extremely weak, and that reflects the situation of a large part of the Haitian population. And also there's a lack of fuel, which has to do with uh, the insecurity and also the economic situation. And all of these factors exacerbated the uh, inequalities in Haiti. In that situation, the return and the um, fact that these uh, migrants were deported creates concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past time, many migrants were expelled in planes and boats from Cuba and the US, Mexico and Turks and Caicos. In accordance to the, uh, I'm sorry, according to the Organization for Migrants, since January, over 16,000 people were expelled and over 70% of that came from the US. Apart from these expulsions, they also took place in the Haitian um, border with Dominican Republic. All according to uh, the uh, Organization for Migrants, 20,000 people were expelled. Many of the exp expulsions from the Dominican Republic took place in November. The figures rose by 40%, in particular, the situation of women and children, because that grew 129% since October. Also during November, at least 180%. Most of these women were, of these people were women. And many 
unaccompanied children were sent back or maybe they were migrants with some sort of medical need or disability there were many many underage children yeah air or sea all of them are specifically vulnerable and need specific protection ladies and gentlemen the high commissioner for human rights is very concerned about these expulsions especially pregnant women or women with young children these expulsions are very concerning because there is no legal framework for them the protocol on the mechanisms for repatriation which was signed in 1919 with the dominican republic exposes these women to several risks and complicates the assistance they can receive the testimonies we have received tell us that these women had no access to medical care during their pregnancy because of out of fear for their interruptions or they had suffered or they uh, got to Haiti in a critical health situation after giving birth. Many families separations took place and there were also mistreatment allegations. Our concerns have to do with air expulsions that um, come from other countries in the region and testimonies tell us that the expulsions uh, or the traveling took place for days or even weeks and before that migrants were unable and during that term they were unable to receive any sort of medical care of course all of these has uh, personal consequences as well there were losses they experienced when they got to Haiti. They were handcuffed, of course. And these traumatized these migrant populations. And the High Commissioner is also concerned about access to justice of these people who were victims of violations to their human rights. And it is, uh, in, in considering the accounts, the government did nothing to help them. And considering all the documented human rights violations, I would like to say a couple of things. The categories of the people who were expelled, these people who were expelled from the US and Mexico left Haiti many years ago and stayed in several countries in South America before reaching Mexico and the US. But the people who come from the Caribbean island left the country very recently because of the economic and security situation in Haiti. And there are also migrants who were intercepted at sea since January, over 1500 Haitians were intercepted three times as much as they were found in the uh, in 2020 many of them died at sea the haitian press talks about these ships who have lost people at sea there are also many people who of course make money out of this situation and ask for uh, many many dollars to uh, send them abroad this communication with the Republican Dominican is constant. And many, in, as we said, some of the people had emigrated for a long time, others hadn't. There's also a number of expelled women who also were sent to the, um, from the Dominican Republic immediately now documents access to documents was a way to bring down the amount of uh, trafficking activity haitians need to be able to access civil uh, documents and that will stop trafficking activities according to the statistics 65 percent of migrants have no identity documents. 
and that's 30 percent of the population and when uh, as and the greater the distance from porto prince the more difficult it is to obtain the documents and finally the difficulties in accessing uh, the situation in the countries. Now, in, its, in, in his intervention at the UN, the prime minister from Haiti said that the problem of migrants needs to remind us that human beings will also always try to escape misery uh, to offer better life conditions to their children. Migrations will continue to exist as long as a greater part of the world's population live in uh, bad conditions. So Haiti should not be isolated in the continent. According to estimations, Haiti has between 10 and 12 inha million inhabitants, and most of them cannot uh, enjoy their social and economic rights. And this, if this problem continues to occur, as long as this, as well as the security problem, then Haitians will continue to try leaving the country, seeking better living conditions. I would like to remind you that migrant rights should be warranted without any sort of distinction. Haitians need to be able to live with dignity and with their rights protected. Vulnerable migrants, regardless of their status, need to be able to enjoy the protection and the support they deserve. And the High Commissioner urged the state of Haiti to ask uh, to, for three things, to intensify its exchanges with the countries in the region, in particular with the Dominican Republic, so that um, the protocols for the return of migrants will be uh, respected and to respect principles that have to do with um, uh, migration situations and also to ensure that the civil population can access uh, their documents and finally to um, monitor the situation of the returnees and to provide them uh, services through the consulates of Haiti. Of course, we must support the government in these efforts so that they will uh, respect and protect the rights of these people. I would like to thank the civil society for their work for those who were expelled, and we are here to continue to work for them. Thank you very much for having listened, listened to me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Roger. Now, I would like to, before starting the participation of the commission, I would like to give the, um, before giving the floor to my colleagues, I would just like to mention how meaningful this hearing is because of the, the fact that the state is here, but also the uh, representatives from the civil society. A week ago, we were in Washington, the commissioners for the first time in two years after this pandemic stroke. And we were remembering that in the last uh, on-site period of uh, sessions um, took place in Haiti. Can you hear me? Yes. So the last on-site period of sessions was held in Haiti. And we must remember President Jovenel Moise for his kindness for what that uh, that period of sessions meant for the commission. And we understand the difficulties uh, the people of Haiti is, go, is going through. So I wanted to start with this memory and appreciate uh, this hearing and the fact that it's taking place. And also I'm, I'm a vice president of the commission, but I'm also the rapporteur for migrants. And I would like to confirm the commitment of the commission in its press releases in July 2021, when this started to happen, but also the press releases we have launched where the commission with 
the rapporteur from the UN for migrants, we both expressed our concern for the expulsion in Texas and the abuse we all witnessed how the Haitian migrants were being mistreated. But apart from that, I'd like to remind you of a recent press release the commission issued on the protection of Haitians in the face of this difficult situation you're all going through. We thank you for your works, your presentation, and the Inter-American Commission will continue to be there for the people of Haiti in this difficult process of discrimination. And as the you, you well said, and the Commission has monitored this, not only the people who, because of the earthquake or other natural resources, had, sorry, natural disasters had to leave Haiti. We're also talking about people who were already living in South America and because of migration changes suffered that abuse we all witnessed. Having said this, I will now give the floor to my colleagues. First of all, the country rapporteurs to Ardo Rallon. Thank you very much, Madam President. Good morning. Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, Special Rapporteur Soledad Garcia, and the Executive Secretary Tania Renom and the Deputy Secretary Maria Claudia. I would also like to welcome the um, organization of the Jesuit Service for Migrants. It's a pleasure to be here today. I would like to congratulate you for the important work you are doing. And it is shown today at this hearing that sheds light on this terrible situation. I would also like to greet Bernard Henry, Ambassador, um, Ms. Ambassador Thomas, and also the representative of the uh, UN, Arnold Royer. I would like to start by expressing my solidarity because of the difficult situation Haiti is facing, not only with regards to this issue, but also because of what happened in the North, because it's an emergency where many lives were lost. And that is why we only have a partial representation of the state. And we are sure that there are many other issues we will discuss. You can send us complimentary information, of course. What we have heard is a situation that is very dramatic. It's a traumatizing situation of inhuman conditions to which these persons were subjected to or are subjected to when they are expelled and returned to Haiti. Each of these persons who are returned have a life project. This situation uh, complicates because this situation is traumatizing, it affects their dignity, and as many have said, it even may lead to suicidal thoughts because of the dramatic situations we have heard of. And without a doubt, even though the state has expressed that uh, it had made claims uh, before its counterparts and had tried to talk to discuss these expulsions to the other states, as a rapporteur, I must urge the state to double down the efforts, as the civil society was saying, to position this issue in the defense of the dignity of Haitians, using all uh, the mechanisms they can. One of these mechanisms is the commission itself. Whenever you face a, a denounce, a report, or a crisis, a particular situation, 
where uh, this is occurring, it's important for you to let us know. And the same applies to the civil society organization. Since the Inter-American Commission has a mandate of monitoring the situation of human rights in the region, and each of the commissioners have um, specific rapporteurships we work in, thematic and country rapporteurships. And without a doubt, the commission can use its resources to raise the alarm through its respective rapporteur or as an instrument for media communication, as was the case with several press releases. But the emergency is has a dimension, has such a dimension that this efforts that have already taken place need to be multiplied and then intensified to address such a regrettable emergency that is uh, risking the dignity and the lives of those who were expelled. And another thing that um, we heard of is the loss of identity cards of passports in many of these cases and the civil society proposed a special mechanism to give these documents to these people. I would like to urge the state to uh, do to implement this idea of the organizations because, as we said many a time, people don't have the resources to afford a new passport, and that puts them at an even more difficult situation. So this is something that should be a priority and I would like to urge the state uh, to do this. Additionally, I would like to say to the members of the Jesuit Service for Migrants that there is, um, oh, we have that as an open communication line with you which allowed us to schedule this hearing for this period of sessions. The work you do is very important because it sheds light on these facts. And I would like you to maintain that communication as fluid as possible through the institutional channels of the commission, because every piece of information helps us do our job. So I would like to congratulate you on your work and on the testimonies you have presented. And of course, we will follow up on all this. There's a commission that the commission is committed to um, work to help Haiti gain back its institutionality and to get better in with specific actions for the respect of human rights of all the people in uh, all areas. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner Arosemena, the Rapporteur for Children. Thank you, President, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla. I would like to greet everyone at this hearing, our teams, the representatives of the state of Haiti, and most especially the Jesuit Service for Migrants, as a petition organization here, and of course, the representatives of the UN in Haiti. First of all, I would like to say that I am very moved, shocked, and sad about this reality that has been presented today. I'm thinking of what a universal society uh, for us to all, all to think about what's going to happen after the pandemic, after the uh, normality will be returning to, because of these 
uh, drama, this situation of a humanitarian, traumatic, cruel crisis. A call for human solidarity in the world, and in particular of the continent, of our region, but the world as a whole. Because this, we cannot stand, as we heard from the UN representative, because migration will continue to occur if people still need to escape misery, if there is no sort of possibilities for the future. And this is the call we need to make for a new humankind, as a humankind with solidarity that is committed to the rights of each human being on this planet. These rights are our rights because we are human. Dignity, equality, rights that in this story we've heard today are not there. They do not exist. I have a specific concern. Of course, I share all of these pain. I was unable to listen to the um, testimony of the person who spoke because we had also the interpreting crisis, interpretation crisis, but I managed to feel your pain, your anguish, and your call for an answer from the state, from society, and from the Inter-American Commission and the rest of the countries in the world. And along those lines of recognizing this reality, since I am the rapporteur for the rights of children, this had already been said about the situation of women, mothers who are pregnant or who have given birth recently, and the need for special and reinforced protection, because that's what they need. And I would like to add, as Rapporteur for Children, the situation of children and adolescents, that high number, that alarming number of children accompanied and unaccompanied but also in this return, this expulsion, because it's not really a return, it's an expulsion of children who are not Haiti nationals and who are facing a serious crisis while being part of a highly vulnerable group. And I would like to urge the state right now to give them that basic identity document so that they can do the minimal proceedings in, in Haiti to get back their lives, their identities. This document is essential. And I know of all the difficulties the state is facing in providing these documents. So I would like to ask our executive, our deputy executive, uh, executive secretary, I would like to ask her to get in touch with the countries these children are coming from so that they can uh, create this contact with the uh, countries of origin in order to provide a swifter answer to these children. That would be very important. And I'm sure, Maria Claudia, we can help 
in this claim for the comprehensive protection of all rights, and in particular, the rights of children and adolescents, who, because in the region, most of our countries have a system for their protection, and the countries of origin of these children should be able to assist them in a swift, special, and strengthened manner. I, I join this commitment made by commissioners Ralon and Julissa, and of course, a rapporteur for economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. Soledad, this country needs a boost. And I apologize, Commissioner Julissa, because I continue to speak, but I would like to remember how Haiti was born, the strength of this country to become a country, a nation. I would like to summon the strength of the Haitian people to move on. And I know that Redesca will assist in this with the efforts of our commission. You have our commitment, our solidarity, and our deepest appreciation of your resiliency and that the strength you continue to need in this fight that we know uh, won't be an easy fight. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. And now I would like to give the floor to the Executive Secretary, Tania Renault. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like first to greet all those who are here today. I would like to thank the representatives of the state, uh, especially uh, because they are in a very difficult time right now. I also would like to thank all civil society organizations for their testimonies. I would like also to express the solidarity of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, especially taking into consideration the last events and facts that um, imply that 175 people died because of those facts. We would like to express our solidarity with the family members of those who died. The Inter-American Commission follows and monitors the situation of human rights and recognizes the specific situation of Haiti, the migration, the, the uh, forced displacement, the diaspora in the region. And that's why it has called upon solidarity from the different states of the continent, especially to take a special consideration uh, regarding the migrants of, uh, from Haiti. We call up in inter-American solidarity because we, are under, we understand Haiti's situation not only as a country crisis, but as a regional emergency in which multilateral organizations need to have a specific and a more important role in order to guarantee uh, the integrity of people. People cannot be returned to their countries when they are ill, when there is a risk for their lives or when they are pregnant. In this regard, we would like to emphasize our solidarity and inter-American solidarity. And we would like to tell you that we are going to pay attention to the next actions and the dialogue between the Inter-American Commission. And we need to work together and to have a closer relationship over time. We would like to especially thank um, the civil society organizations for requesting this hearing. Without uh, any doubt, you are bringing firsthand important information and very moving stories. And we need to understand those stories taking into consideration the crisis in Haiti. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you, Madam President. I also would like to express uh, our deepest solidarity. This is a mandate that the Commission uh, requested me in order to promote economic, social, cultural, environmental rights. Those rights are being especially affected in Haiti for many years. 
and because of the natural disasters and the pandemic and the social and economic crisis in the country, we understand that those rights are more and more affected. And I also would like to take the most, this opportunity to thank the information provided by the state and civil society organizations. I would like to recognize the efforts made by civil society, for example, in terms of psychosocial support for the victims, because this is also a mental health pandemic, especially for those who are suffering this specific situation. And I would like to ask you or to give us as much information as you have regarding economic, social, cultural, environmental rights, access to right to health, to water, to food, and especially, for example, the lack of health care for women, the lack of diagnosis of the COVID infection. Um, you are going to send us a lot of information and I would like to request civil society in the state because we would like to know what the main challenges are in, for the state of Haiti uh, to make the best use of their available resources. And also in line with what the commissioners have said, I would like to ask you what role you think that the international community should have at this critical time in the country so that we can join efforts in the commission to help you in order to search for international cooperation that is so necessary today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rapporteur. With that, we are going to start the second round of participation. I would like to give the floor to civil society organizations for 15 minutes. Honorable members of the commission, colleagues, I would like to start by uh, answering the last question made by Ms. Soledad Garcia Munoz. And, and we believed in the Jesuit service and how the commission can help us. Uh, the commission can help us by calling up on states so that press, uh, so that a states take or assume their role as a state in Haiti. The state needs to um, have a position and it should publicly request and it should commit publicly and say that we no longer stand that situation. And I think that the commission can be very, can play a very important role in that. Because in terms, uh, because returned persons say that the world is not seeing the conditions in which we are living or the conditions in which people are being deported and, and that's why I would like for the commission to request the states and those countries that are returning people or deporting people to uh, show that because journalists should know how uh, people are being treated in the 21st century. I think that the commission can help us with that. We actually believe that and we really count on you for that. This week, we receive two flights every day, and sometimes media don't know about this. Yesterday, we had two flights. On Monday, we had two flights, and journalists do not know about this. And we don't know when this situation will come to an end. Five years, five days ago, we have a conversation with an organization in the southern part of Mexico, and they told us that there are 30,000 Haitian people that are waiting to cross the border when they reach Texas, they will be captured and they will be deported. We don't know for how long those deportation flights will continue. And we would like for the commission using all the available uh, resources, exercise pressure so that we, everybody takes into consideration the situation of those persons and their dignity 
so that people can request for asylum. Sometimes people do not have access to those kind of applications. And since that situation is not visible, what we see that what's happening is very serious. Nobody is knows about that because this is done with the conspiracy with uh, the state of Haiti together. They know about this with their acquisition, acquisitions. Uh, the state is not actually present here. The state of Haiti uh, manage issues as firefighters. Uh, they do not anticipate any situations. They just try to put a fire off. So we would like to request the commission to help the state of Haiti. to create better conditions for those who are deported or return so that they work together with other countries. So they receive with dignity migrants from Haiti and those that also, those who are deported, they should be better integrated into society here in Haiti so that citizens are guaranteed a minimal level of security. Personally, I don't dare going out to the streets. I'm afraid. Imagine. So imagine the situation of other Haitians. Nobody in Haiti dares to be on the streets after 5 p.m. in the afternoon. I think that uh, the other representatives of civil society would like to say something. So I would like to give the floor to my colleague. We have a concern. We need to determine the number of people that are being deported to Haiti. Does the state of Haiti know how many flights there will be to Haiti? We as civil society organizations, we need the commission to help human rights organizations in Haiti so that we have that information to say, okay, we have to wait three, six, nine months to help our colleagues or our uh, people from Haiti that are returning our country. So, because we need also to request the commission to help us promote national solid solidarity so that Haitian citizens can live with dignity, whatever they are, where they are abroad or whether they have returned to Haiti because we believe that transnational solidarity can help Haitians, whatever they are, whether they are in for abroad or in a foreign territory or whether they are in Haiti. So we would like to, to ask the commission to help us promote transnational solidarity to help our people from Haiti. Thank you. Our colleague, that is a psychologist, would like to add something else. Can we do it? Yes, of course. I would like to add the following. Since we cannot avoid detentions in our countries, we would like to request the commission to ask American authorities to assist detainees so that they have psychosocial support because all of them have gone through very difficult situations. They are exposed to several violations of their rights. So their situation is too painful. Um, 
it's painful to be in prison, not being able to see those of their that belong to their family, to be isolated. That's too hard, too painful. Um, detainees do not know if it's the evening or the morning. It's really painful. So we request the commission to ask American authorities to implement infrastructure and to provide those detainees with psychological support. That's what we are requesting the commission. And I also would like to conclude uh, this intervention by saying, by, by giving the floor to a migrant, by quoting those migrants that were deported. They told us that uh, their experience abroad was a very difficult one. They tried to protect women, but that they had issues in the airport when they were returned to Haiti. They had to use a truck to go back home, but they couldn't take the truck. But I would like also to say that there was a person that lost their son when they returned to Haiti. We need to see how we can help this man that had issues with her uh, partner, with his partner, and also that person that have a problem with their son. They are losing their loved ones. So we need to see how we can help these people who return to our country. And that is what we are requesting the state of Haiti to help us. Uh, also, I would like to add something else. Some of those who have been deported and that have returned to Haiti have told us that the state receives us like this. The state wants us to be members of the gangs, of those informal or illegal gangs, and we don't want to be part of that. And that's seems to be the only thing that it, the state of Haiti is offering us. And for those who return, that's the only livelihood that we can have here in Haiti. That's what I wanted to present before you. The state needs to take this seriously. Also, I also would like to pay tribute to those who disappear. I would like to pray for them. But what's happening with those people who are deported? And we would like to report this before the commission too. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state for 10 minutes. Thank you. Madam President of this hearing, it's important that uh, you are bringing this important issue to the table. We understand that we have a very serious problem regarding the regarding migration. Madam President. A person cannot say that the state is not concerned about these cases involving migrants. The statement made by Mr. Ardol or no proves that we are concerned. He commented on the position of the first of the prime minister at the General Assembly of the United Nations. The state of Haiti and the government of Haiti consider this as a priority issue. And that's why this hearing is so important for us. 
the state of Haiti is present uh, uh, through me and through my colleague, Sean Bernard, and also the government of Haiti is also present. We are representing them. We are facing a very difficult situation, and you know that this is a very difficult situation that affects all areas. And the different ministries, especially the Migration Office, need to work on the documentation of the people of Haiti. Madam President, I will consider what has been discussed in this meeting, in this hearing, and as I said before, My, I will send my answer in writing to the commission as soon as possible. Thank you, Madam President. Go ahead, Jean Bernard, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Again, I would like for you giving me the floor. I am here to supplement or to uh, add some comments to the question or to the answer given by, by the ambassador. We would like to say that the state of Haiti is concerned about human rights and that our state is willing to collaborate with the Inter-American Commission. I recall the visit of the commission in 2019 um, the state of Haiti invited the commission to visit the country and to prepare a report after observing the situation in our country. In 2020, we have uh, also a session with on-site meetings and with bilateral meetings with different commissioners. In order to continue monitoring the situation of human rights in Haiti and without uh, any hesitation, we are at your disposal to provide you with information so that you can complete the report or the annual report, especially the area about Haiti. We are always willing to collaborate with the American Commission and the state uh, is following up on the precautionary measures granted by the Inter-American Commission on different cases. In addition, we would like to greet the executive secretary of the commission and also as Judith and Mrs. Munoz for being here today. Now, I would like to say we would like to say that we would like to collaborate with Soledad Garcia Munoz to help them address the climate change because we know that there is a hard situation. We are here to collaborate and to improve uh, the country situation in the area of human rights. I wanted to especially mention this point and I also would like to answer uh, some of the comments made by the Jesuit service of migrants. I know that with a lot of conviction, they have presented the situation of migrants. And as I said before, on November the 19th, the state of Haiti requested the consulate to monitor the situation of those migrants that were at the border. So we are trying to collaborate with the United States, with the United uh, States. We know that this is a concern, and we are working together with the United States. Have you listened to us? Also, also the ambassador reported on the security situation in Haiti. And he said that deportation was not the ideal situation. Our complaints and claims were listened to by American authorities. 
also our ministries are concerned about the security situation. They visit some police stations uh in order to understand the situation of human rights of those who have been deported to haiti again i would like to thank the um collaboration of civil society organizations and the commission the state appreciates these efforts and we try to um provide testimonies and recommendations and we are here open and willing to collaborate. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. We are reaching the closing of this hearing, but we are not uh, ending or solving our concern regarding the human rights situation in Haiti, especially with regard to migrants. I also would like to thank all of you for this information. The Inter-American Commission is preparing the report on Haiti because of the pandemic, the report had to be deferred, but the information that you are providing us with is very important. We also would like to thank the answer of the state and the possibility of having technical cooperation. We are going to continue doing this in the future. As president of this hearing, as vice president of the Inter-American Commission, and as rapporteur for migrants, I think that my colleagues believe the same. We are really moved and concerned about this situation. I would like to thank the Shesut Service for being here today, but also for their constant work and their support. And that request for psychosocial support is so important because this is a crisis that is not only affecting society, families, women, and children, but we cannot allow hope to be lost. And I would like to thank the state of Haiti in spite of the difficult times that you are facing right now. And the commission will continue to work in that line. I also would like to recall that the Inter-American Commission recently published Resolution 21, Protection of Haitians in Human Mobility, Inter-American Solidarity. That resolution is available in French, Spanish, and Creole. I would like to highlight this title. It's Inter-American Solidarity. This is a crisis that not affects only a population or a country. It's a regional crisis. We have countries of origin, we have countries of uh, transit, and we have countries of destination. We have similar situations. For example, we have Chile, people from Haiti that were in Chile that traveled to the United States and that returned to Haiti. The Inter-American Commission is well aware of the situation. And I would like to call up in the member states of the OAS, in spite of all those conventions that have been ratified, you are all committed or and you have the obligations because of the American uh, convention. And we cannot leave Haiti alone because what's happening in Haiti is a problem that affects the region as a whole. As I said in the hearings, I also would like to address those who are living in Haiti, those people whose voices have been quoted today, that they are suffering. We have women, men, families, that are being affected. We have the testimonies of the OACHR. Landin, you told me at the time, I would like to talk to you now for thanking you for being here today and we to thank you for your struggle and to say that we truly respect uh, for your courage for expressing and raising your voice today. We are not going to leave you alone. The Inter-American Commission through its different mechanisms will continue to work so that we cannot leave behind something that is so essential, that is human dignity. Human rights do not depend on nationality or a citizenship or an, an ID or a document. Dignity is an important part of people and we will continue to work so that we can support you along this process and this crisis. I would like to thank my colleagues from the Inter-American Commission, the team of interpreters that have joined us today. I would like to thank all of you, especially those also who are following us 
I would like uh, to say that you have a good day. I'm closing the hearing right now.